Hello, my name is Dr. Haley Chiswick. Here at the University at Buffalo, we are proud to have developed the Buffalo Concussion March Test, or BCMT. This video is designed to help teach you how to administer and interpret the BCMT. Additional resources on the BCMT and other concussion assessment tools from the University at Buffalo can be found on our website. Before we get started, here is a word from our Director of Concussion Research. Hello, my name is Nader Heather, and I'm the Director of Research at the University at Buffalo's Concussion Management Clinic and Research Center. Along with my colleague and mentor, John Letty, we developed the Buffalo Concussion March in Place Test. International guidelines suggest that individualized subsymptomatic aerobic exercise is beneficial for the recovery in athletes with sports-related concussions. But how do we give them this individualized prescription? We do them by assessing their exercise intolerance on graded exertion testing. The most common graded exertion test for athletes with sports-related concussions is the Buffalo Concussion Treadmill Test. And today we are going to be talking about the low-cost, low-equipment equivalent of it, the Buffalo Concussion March in Place Test. The purpose of the BCMT is to assess the degree of exercise tolerance in patients with concussion, establish a safe level of exercise for the treatment of concussion, and to help differentiate between concussion and other possible diagnoses. The BCMT should never be used alone to diagnose a concussion or to provide clearance to begin a return to play protocol. This test should be used in combination with a full clinical examination completed by an experienced provider. Our test was originally designed for service members with concussions. However, it is low cost and requires less equipment than other graded exercise tests. This makes the BCMT useful for a variety of clinical settings. Before beginning the test, patients should be evaluated for any contraindications to exercise testing. For further information on contraindications, please refer to the BCMT manual on our website. The BCMT is not recommended within 24 hours of a concussive brain injury or if the patient is too symptomatic and cannot tolerate low levels of physical activity without significant symptom burden. We suggest that at least one person conducting the BCMT is trained in CPR and that an AED is always available. We also recommend that two people perform the test whenever possible. In this case, one test administrator should stand next to the participant as a spotter, while the other administrator records data. It is possible to complete the BCMT with one examiner. Here are the supplies you are going to need to perform the Buffalo Concussion March Test. Tape, a metronome, or the BCMT track, available on our website. A heart rate monitor. We recommend a polar armband or chest band a visual analog scale, or VAS, a Borg grading of perceived exertion, or RPE scale, a data collection sheet, available on our website, a chair, water, and a towel for patient recovery after exercise. To get started, ask the patient to arrive ready to exercise. Comfortable shoes and workout clothes are advised. Describe the testing procedure to the patient. Allow them to ask questions. Inform them that participation is voluntary and that they may stop the test at any time. Have the patient wear a heart rate monitor per the manufacturer's instructions. Record the patient's heart rate and baseline concussion symptoms after two minutes of seated rest. Symptoms should be recorded on the 0 to 10 VAS scale. Place the RPE and VAS scales within comfortable viewing distance of the patient so that the scales can be seen during the test. Adhere tape to a wall to serve as a guide for proper hip flexure during the test. Tape should be positioned at the midpoint of the participant's thigh at 45 degrees of hip flexion. Hip flexion can be estimated by having the patient stand next to the wall and asking them to raise the leg closest to the wall to 90 degrees of hip flexion. Then ask the patient to lower their leg halfway. 
This is approximately 45 degrees of hip flexion, which is appropriate for the BCMT. The patient should stand parallel to the wall with the tape clearly visible beside them during the test. Once the tape is adhered to the wall, baseline measurements have been collected and the patient is oriented to test procedures, the exam can begin. It is important to note that the BCMT data collection sheet has a row for stage zero measurements. Stage zero is when the patient is standing just before marching begins. If you are using the click track, an introductory statement will precede the beats. The track ends after 20 minutes. If you are using a metronome, provide a quick countdown and start the metronome at 70 beats per minute. The pace of the test increases by 10 beats per minute each minute. The BCMT data collection sheet indicates the required pace at each stage. This sheet is available on our website. Once the track has begun, Patients will raise one knee and then the other following the beat of the metronome track. The patient must raise one leg to the height of the tape on every beat. The patient should maintain an upright posture throughout the test. About five seconds before the end of each one minute stage, record the patient's heart rate and ask the patient to rate their symptom severity and perceived level of exertion. Any increase in VAS should be noted and any new symptoms a patient reports count as an additional point on the VAS. Have the participant continue to march at the required pace until stopping criteria is met. Once the test is over, have the participant sit. After two minutes, record heart rate, RPE, and VAS once more. The participant should rest in a quiet environment until symptom severity returns to pre-test levels. Provide water and a towel for the patient if needed. The BCMT typically lasts five to 15 minutes, including the two minute post-assessment rest. Knowing the stopping criteria for the BCMT is important. You should stop the Buffalo Concussion March Test if there is more than mild symptom exacerbation, which is an increase in concussion symptoms of three or more points from the baseline VAS score. The patient reports voluntary exhaustion, which is an RPE of greater than 17 without more than mild concussion symptom exacerbation. The patient can no longer maintain the MARCH protocol height or pace. The examiner notes rapid progression of complaints like pain or pressure in the head, or the examiner notes a safety risk to the participant. The participant has reached 90% or more of their age-predicted heart rate maximum. The participant requests to stop for any other reason. The BCMT is voluntary. The examiner should note the reason why the test was stopped. Now that the test is complete, here's how you interpret the results. Concussed patients often experience exercise intolerance after injury. Patients who are unable to reach 85% of their age-predicted heart rate maximum during exercise testing may be experiencing exercise intolerance due to a concussive injury. When tested within a week of concussion, most patients cannot exceed 70% of age-predicted maximum heart rate without more than mild symptom exacerbation. The maximum heart rate achieved on the BCMT during symptom exacerbation is called the heart rate threshold, or HRT. Current research suggests that concussed patients can safely complete aerobic exercise at 80 to 90% of their HRT. If the participant can exercise to voluntary exhaustion without a more than mild increase in concussion symptoms, but is not clear to return to play because of symptoms at risk or physical examination impairments, research suggests that the patient can perform aerobic exercise for concussion rehabilitation without limitations. Participants who have symptoms at rest but do not experience more than mild symptom increase during exercise should be evaluated for dysfunction of the cervical spine, ocular motor vestibular systems, temporomandibular region, or for migraine headaches. A patient's full clinical presentation should be considered when prescribing aerobic exercise to ensure safety and efficacy. You have now completed the Buffalo Concussion March test. For more information about the test and for resources, please visit our website.